Hi, this is the program we're looking at today. And officially what it does is it accepts a date as input and it tells you what day that date falls on. And as far as I can tell, you can go as far back into the past or as far into the future as you want. And it's always able to find out what the day is, which is kind of cool. One thing you might like to do is type in your birthday. Find out what day you were born on. But for instance, if I typed in today's date, it's 11-24-2012, and do get today, and it's uh, Saturday. And then it has a line from the rhyme about days, especially days you're born on. Like Saturday's child works hard for a living. I say officially it's about looking up a day based on a date, but what it really turned out to be much more about is looking up information in a table. Like if you give it one piece of information, finding out another as associated piece of information that's associated in a specific table. And the way we do that is with an array of structs. There's actually another way using a list of collections, which we talked about in the past. But since I had a finite number of data items that I knew what the number were, i.e. seven days in a week and seven movie stars in a list box, I uh, figured an array of structs would be appropriate since it's mainly you specify a specific number and you don't add to it dynamically. When we look at the code in the event handler for the button, basically what we're doing is we're getting the uh, date that's put into the uh, uh, text box and putting it in the string variable. And then we're using a date time parse to parse the date into a date time variable. And one useful piece of information this gave me is you can just specify a date in order to get a date time value. It probably has some arbitrary time like 00 colon 00 colon 00 or something like that with the date. But another uh, useful thing I learned is there's a specific uh, uh, property that is day of the week. So I can then, once I have the date time variable, I can say variable name dot day of week dot to string and then put that in a string variable and that'll be the day for that date. So really these three lines of code are the main program in terms of what I officially was doing. But then below this we put the day in the uh, text box and we put the uh, rhyme in another text box or another label rather, they're both labels. And the way we get the rhyme is we do a table lookup. And the table lookups come in three parts. If we go up to the top, the first part is you declare a structure, which is day to rhyme, and it has two pieces of data that are associated with each other, a day of week and then a line of a rhyme. And then I have a constructor that accepts two values, and the values it gets, it puts into the uh, data items of the structure. So if we have an array of structures like this, the structure itself is like a record, and then the array is like a table. And in order to allocate each of the uh, structures, I do a new structure name and pass it the uh, day of week value and then the rhyme value. So the first two parts of the three-part uh, construct is that we declare the uh, structure and then we define the array of structures. And then the third part is a function which basically receives one item as an input and returns the other item as an output. And this consists really of just two statements, a for each that goes through the array of structures. And then it compares the day of week to the day this input and the uh, parameter. And if there's a match, it returns the uh, corresponding rhyme line. So really this is all that 
that we need in order to get this to work. The main difficult part is defining the data. And of course if it doesn't find it, it returns unknown day. But presumably that would never happen since we've defined all the days that it, we can possibly get back. And then for the list box, the default uh, event handler for list box, if we double click on it, is selected index changed. And this essentially works identically. We get the uh, selected item, convert it to a string, and then pass it to another translation function. And once we get the return value from the translation function, we put that in a text box, it says. I'm surprised that's not a label. And then we call the click event in order to fill in the labels. Oh yeah, I can see where it is. It puts it in the text box because this auto fills in the text box we were typing in by hand before. And then once this is auto filled in, it calls the click event for the button. So it's as though we filled in that text box and pressed the button. And the translation construct for the uh, star to date is essentially the same. We have two pieces of information that are associated with each other that are defined in a construct, a star and a date born. And then we have a constructor which sets these values to the correct uh, values. And then the second part is we have an array of these structures that are defined and it passes like Katie Holmes and her birthday, Michelle Pfeiffer and her birthday, Boris Karloff and her his birthday, and so on through seven stars who I laboriously found that have different days of the week as birthdays. And then the translation uh, function once again just accepts one of the parameters as an input and it could be either one of the parameters. You could pass it a birthday and look up the star name too. But in this case we pass it a star and we return the birth date. So it, it just has a for each that goes through each of the elements in the array of structs, looks at the star column in that record, and if it's the same as the one that's input as a parameter, it returns the other value which is the date born. So if we compile and run this and say select Katie Holmes, it does the table lookup on her birthday and puts it in the text box and then it presses the button as though we'd clicked on it behind the scenes and comes up with Monday and Monday's child is fair of face. And then Michelle Pfeiffer is Tuesday's child is full of grace although probably fair of face would be more appropriate. And then Boris Karloff is Wednesday's child is full of woe, which seems appropriate since he mainly played Frankenstein. And Scarlett Johansson is Thursday's child has far to go, which I think she is going pretty far. And then Anthony Hopkins is Friday's child is loving and giving. And Chris Evans uh, is Saturday's child works hard for a living and then Robert Downey Jr.'s is uh, Sunday and his, his rhyme is but the child who's born on the Sabbath day is Bonnie and Blythe and good and gay. I think the connotations of the word gay have changed somewhat over the years but we get the gist of it. Well I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot and as I say, it's mainly more about translation and table lookup than it is about finding the day that a date falls on. Although it's fascinating, especially to find out the day your birthday is if you don't already know it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.